Welcome back to American Eye 200M. We work day and night to bring you the fastest and most reliable news. In order not to miss any updates on the Israel-Hamas war, including the latest developments and special reports, you can subscribe to our channel. Dramatic developments continue to unfold as the conflict between the Israeli army and Hamas intensifies, centered on the Gaza Strip. There are concealed Hamas tunnels in the southwest of the city, from Al-Zahra to Nusirat camp, and from there to the border crossing between Khan Yunus and Rafah. Through reconnaissance and detection operations, the IED, DF's Heron and Hermes drone armies have discovered Hamas secret tunnels and passages in Khan Yunis and Gaza City in the past few days. The IDF Heron drones locate Hamas underground targets in Gaza, while the Hermes drones, which are capable of operating for 36 hours, destroy them. With this feature, Israel ranks at the very top in drone technology, electronic defense, and attack capabilities. Drones currently undertake more than 75 of Israeli Air Force flight missions. This was an essential phase in the Israeli army's preparations for a ground invasion in Gaza. The IDF can employ its drone army to launch attacks on a vast number of hidden Hamas targets from Gaza to Haifa, with lesser casualties. So far, IDF drones and fighter jets have destroyed over 1,500 Hamas targets. In these offensive operations, IDF drones have surpassed fighter jets. The IDF has identified a large number of Hamas targets above Gaza using its Heron drones. One of the targets was the Sheikh Radwan community north of Gaza City, which houses what Hamas refers to as one of its most senior branches, the security forces. Jihad Muhaizen, the so-called major general in charge of Hamas's security forces in this community, was actively planning attacks against Israel. The IDF's drone army, assisted by the Israeli Air Force, pinpointed the core Hamas headquarters in Sheikh Radwan. The IDF then used Hermes drones with 450 payloads to strike the Hamas base there. Following the drone strikes, it was discovered that there was a tunnel line running beneath the so-called headquarters in Sheikh Radwan. During the offensive operation, the EDF uncovered the connection routes, entry and exit points of this tunnel line, and destroyed these critical locations using IEDs filled with explosives. Following the severe explosions, the IDF declared that Jihad Muhaizen, Hamas's so-called Major General, was killed while fleeing through the tunnel lines. He is the highest ranking figure killed by the Israeli army thus far. Jihad Muhaizen was supposedly one of the key players in the preparation of attacks against Israeli citizens and was in charge of the situation of Hamas hostages. However, the most recent Israeli drone strikes have targeted both the Sheikh Radwan headquarters in northern Gaza and Jihad Muhaizen, Hamas's asserted top commander. These severe casualties have fueled Hamas's concerns as it prepares for ground attacks by the Israeli army. So what is Hamas's plan, especially in Gaza, now that the IDF ground offensive has begun locally and a full-scale ground operation is expected to kick off any day now? Can Gaza's secret tunnels, passages, and access roads support Hamas? To begin with, a tunnel discovered by the Israeli army two months before a conflict with Hamas in 2014 had a 165-meter deep entrance shaft and extended roughly two miles underground before exiting the ground at the Ain Hashlosha Kibbutz in Israel. The arched concrete roof of the tunnel was approximately 5 am high. Telephone and power lines, as well as railroads for cargo transport, traveled through the length of the tunnel. Hamas is currently utilizing these underground systems to delay ground attacks against the IDF. The complex labyrinth beneath Gaza City is a crucial defensive asset for Hamas, as it allows militants to hide and move between houses undetected. But how are the tunnels constructed? The underground network was meticulously built by Palestinian workers utilizing sophisticated technology and thousands of tons of cement in a multi-year underground construction project into Israeli land. Their construction paved the way for Hamas to launch strikes on Israel and then hide themselves in the aftermath. But as you can see, the rules of the game have changed. The IDF was able to breach Hamas's secret tunnel lines using cutting edge military equipment, and these operations are still ongoing.
but Hamas was exploiting these subterranean networks for more than just organizing attacks and hiding. There was also a commercial aspect to it. For years, Israel attempted to halt the flow of military supplies to Hamas via the tunnels into Gaza. Egypt attempted to flood them to prevent their usage, and the Egyptian army demolished the majority of the over 1,000 tunnels beneath the border with the enclave, which has been under Israeli embargo since Hamas assumed authority in 2007. However, Hamas has continually kept these tunnels active in order to continue its operations as well as for smuggling. We can clearly see that Hamas is now employing a tunnel strategy against the IDF. But at this crucial stage in the war, the Hamas tunnels are no longer an impenetrable target. The Israeli army has repeatedly targeted tunnels in Beit Hanun in the northern Gaza Strip, under residences in Gaza City, and in the Rafah area, alleging that they are used to transfer weapons and equipment. While the EDF attempts to wipe out Hamas's tunnel threats, international political figures are working to counter Hamas's attempts to escalate the war by using underground lines in both the Gaza Strip and in the direction of Egypt. Following a solidarity visit to Israel, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz traveled to Egypt and met with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi to show his support for Cairo's attempts to de-escalate tensions in Gaza. Scholz also stated that he and Sisi discussed the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Along with Germany, the U.S. has taken steps to limit Hamas's offensive actions. The U.S. Treasury Department imposed sanctions on a group of 10 Hamas members and financial facilitators in Gaza and the region, including Kuwaiting, Qatar. The designations are aimed at Hamas members who handle funds in a secret investment portfolio, a Qatar-based financial facilitator with close ties to the Iranian government, a top Hamas commander, and a virtual currency exchange and operator in Gaza. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen made the key announcement. The U.S. has taken steps to halt Hamas attacks on Israel while also providing assistance to the people of Gaza. Us President Joe Biden announced $100 million in additional aid to the West Bank and Gaza Strip during a speech in Israel. The president did not go into detail about the funding. In addition to President Biden's assistance, news of solidarity actions in the direction of Egypt emerged. In one of his most recent pronouncements, U.S. President Joe Biden stated that Egypt had agreed to open the Rafah border crossing to allow approximately 20 trucks carrying humanitarian aid into Gaza. Biden expressed gratitude to his Egyptian colleague Abdel Fattah El Sisi for the agreement, adding that they had previously spoken on the phone. We hope that with the support of these countries, both Israeli and Palestinian civilians will find peace soon. Threats from Hezbollah, on the other hand, remain. Hezbollah might become a wild card in the Hamas-Israel dispute, setting off a larger regional battle. The U.S. Embassy in Lebanon has also advised Americans not to visit the country. We have updated our travel warning for Lebanon to level 4, the embassy said in a social media post. Do not travel. We urge us citizens not to travel to Lebanon. We advise us citizens in Lebanon to make appropriate arrangements to leave the country. The British Embassy in Beirut also stated this morning the advice is now against all travel to Lebanon. If already in Lebanon, we encourage British citizens to leave while commercial options are available. A similar warning was sent by Germany to its residents in Lebanon. The United States, on the other hand, announced that Israelis can now visit the country without a visa for up to 90 days. The previously anticipated travel benefit will now go into effect on November 30th. The shortened time frame implies that eligible Israelis fleeing the Israel, Hamas conflict will be able to enter the U.S. sooner than expected, without having to go through the usual visa application process, which can delay travel. To summarize, as Hamas and Hezbollah continue their attacks, Israel, with the help of the U.S., is devising strategies to end this critical Middle Eastern crisis and rescue the residents affected by the war. We will see what will happen in the coming days. Thank you for watching our video. You can support us by commenting and liking the video. See you in our next work.